Hey guys, this is Woodshop Junkies and today I'm going to attempt to make a self-locking cleat mount. In my previous video I added my French cleat wall and I figured if I could use it to suspend some kind of articulated arm to use as a camera mount instead of a tripod, I could free up some space in the shop and also potentially improve the quality of my videos. The problem is to get the best functionality from a system like this, the suspended object needs to be weighed down. In the case of smaller mounts like a screwdriver organizer or a camera mount, they are likely to pop out of place when you bump up against them because they aren't very heavy. Also in the case of a camera mount, I'd have a large cantilever that I need to move around for better camera angles. This would also likely result in the cleat coming undone. In an attempt to overcome this problem, I figured I could add a mechanism that could mimic the effects of the cleat being weighed down. Now because I'm prototyping I'm only going to assemble the mount to test its functionality. If it works then I can incorporate the design into future projects. To get started I'm going to assemble a conventional cleat mount like this with the only real thing I do differently being removing the tip of the cleat like that. That like I mentioned in my previous video is so that small amounts of dust on the inside won't hinder the cleat's ability to seat properly. Okay, so this is what a conventional cleat mount would look like and for the purpose of stationary storage or heavier units it is more than good enough but for a lighter unit or for my camera mount a little bit of forward pressure or upward pressure will disengage the cleat so in an effort to mimic the effects of the of the cleat being weighed down i'm going to add springs at the back to apply pressure to the bottom of the wall cleat so what I'm going to do, at the back of the mount, I'm going to install these two blocks. The bottom one is going to be fixed to the mount, while the second one is going to be the push block. It's going to be responsible for applying the force of the springs, which is going to be installed between the two, onto the bottom of the wall cleat. Okay, so the top line represents the bottom of the wall cleat when the cleat is engaged. The bottom line represents the stroke required to engage the cleat. What this means is that when the mount is against the wall, the pusher block needs to sit at this point with enough force to keep the mount on the wall. But the springs need the ability to further compress to this point to allow hooking the cleat onto the wall. It might seem a bit confusing at this stage, so I will run through it again once it is assembled. But first, I need to prep the blocks. Okay, so the first stage of the preparation involved making a series of cutouts on both pieces at different depths. The ones that are mirrored and at the exact same depth are to act as seating for the springs so they don't move around. 
The ones on the opposite end are a bit deeper and these are to accommodate bolt heads for a series of bolts I'm going to add to act as guides and to keep the assembly together. And for the second stage of the preparation I simply drilled the holes all the way through to match the bolt thickness. So now I can start assembling. Right, so that's all the preparation and the two blocks are very similar but slightly different. This being the push block and the first thing I'm going to do is add this bolt to it. Like this, the function of this bolt is to act as a guide to keep the two blocks aligned. This is exactly the same as this bolt, the only thing is I cut the head off with a hacksaw and I sanded the edge to be a bit smoother. Pretty much like that and the other bolts are going to be added now to keep the entire assembly together and also accommodate the springs. And that's pretty much it. Now you can see when the springs are compressed all the way, it, it is underneath the bottom line, which means that the stroke is long enough to allow engaging the cleat. And that's pretty much it for my self-locking cleat mount, or version 1 at least. I can tell I'm going to have to mess around with the spring tension a bit and also the stroke length, but for now at least I can test it. And it seems to work just fine. It is definitely a huge improvement from just a regular cleat mount and I really think it will work for what I intend to do with it. And that's pretty much it. The concept works and I'm quite pleased with the results. But I would love to hear your thoughts on this project. Do you think there is a need for this in the everyday woodworking workshop or do you think it's an overcomplicated solution to a simple problem? Then before I end this video I just want to take a moment to mention I do get random inquiries about the equipment I use so I started building out an Amazon storefront where most of these items can be found. It is a work in progress but at the moment some of the more frequently inquired about items are listed there. The link will be in the description of this video. Keep in mind that these are affiliate links so you will be supporting the channel by using them. But that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did and you are not subscribed yet you should do that now so you don't miss out on my future builds. But as always thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Cheers.